Welcome to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood, flooring, and sawmill industry. I'm your host, Steve from Acres of Timber. Each week, we feature various wood business owners and entrepreneurs from around the globe. We share their stories, paths, insights, so that you can network, learn, and grow your own wood business. Thank you so much for listening. Now enjoy the episode. The Woodpreneur Podcast is proudly sponsored by Acres CRM. Acres CRM is the wood industry's only customer relationship management software dedicated to helping you automate your sales and marketing so that you can focus on serving your customers and growing your business. You can visit acresoftimber.com to learn more and to schedule a demo. Once again, that's acresoftimber.com. Hey, welcome to a brand new episode of the Woodpreneur Podcast. Is your host, Steve. Today's guest is Nathan Zirkel from A to Z Man Construction. How you doing, Nathan? Great. How are you doing, Steve? Good, thanks. Hey, so as part of the podcast, I'm trying to get more construction folks because you are woodpreneurs as well, right? And so- yeah. It's not just folks with mills and make tables and built-ins. And so thanks so much for joining us. Where are you located? We're located in Kansas City, Missouri. Cool. Very cool. So, and um, kind of encompasses a lot of area. Yeah. We do work on both state, both Missouri and Kansas. Awesome. Awesome. Tell us the the origin story. How'd you get started? Actually, I used to be a fireman and I got started. I built my house or I remodeled a ho- our house that we live in currently. Okay. And that kind of just started everything. And then I, I was doing it on my days off. And then I eventually, I got hurt here about three years ago and had to step away from the fire department. And so this kind of went into full time. It was always full time, but it was went into even more full time. Yeah. Very randomly, I just interviewed Nathan Owak. The name sounds familiar. Okay. He's a fireman too in Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. So you started building your own stuff and then what was the moment when you realized that, that this was a company that I wanted to build? Kind of when somebody, you know, other people started hitting me up, friends, family, asking me, you know, hey, can you do this for us? You know? And so that's kind of what started it. And then I eventually just it was like, hey, you know, I ought to just take on this full time or all my part time day, or my days off, I should say. How did you make it full time? You know, the first few years was kind of, it wasn't really full time. It was kind of ups and downs. And then it just eventually I made it, you know, doing bigger and bigger jobs. So it just took on its own life basically. Yeah. 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 That's pretty amazing. In terms of your services, what are your main services that you provide? So we mainly do, you know, for models and stuff like that. We do a lot of kitchens, a lot of bathroom. As you can probably hear, we're working on a bathroom right now, uh, in this home. So, awesome. um, it, yeah, so I was lucky. These are good friends and they're allowing me to sit here and <laughs> do this interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, this is live on site, right? Yeah, is- <laughs> exactly. Gameplay. So what's been the challenge of running a construction business in the first couple of years? So how many years has it been where you've been full-time? So I've been running the business for about 16 years. I've been pretty much full-time for the last 10, I would say. Okay. So those first couple of years, what were those like? What were the challenges? You know, just coming up with, you know, more jobs and how to get different leads and things like that and how to grow my business and not being you know, a business minded individual, I was always construction minded, you know, I was always in the construction industry, even before I was a fireman. So I've done pretty much everything you can think of. And so learning how to, you know, run a business, I think was the biggest challenge and it still is a big challenge. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm still learning to this day. And luckily I have, you know, a great accountant, a great wife and, and, you know, not typically in that war order, but you know, <laughs> but they help me out and keep me focused, you know, the suggestions and you know, how to do things well. For sure. For sure. How did you zone in on your niche? I really don't know. <laughs> you know, all of our customers are word of mouth. We do zero advertising. You know, the social media stuff that we have is just people that we've known and they refer us to other people. Well, I do zero advertising. 
you know, other than what's on my trucks and trailers. So, wow. wow. Yeah. But, is your city growing? Kansas City is always in a perpetual state of growth. It yeah. seems like just because we're such a large metropolitan area. I yeah. mean, and it's, like I said, it spans over two states. So, and it's always growing, but I think right now we're doing a lot of remodels on older homes built, you know, anywhere from the 1920s all the way up to, you know, just a few years ago. So this home we're working on now is it was built in the early eighties. So there's been, we've had to do a lot of structural changes. Is that crazy? Yeah. The eighties or 40 years ago. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. How have customers changed over the past 10 years? Like what was it like then and what is it like now working with customers and just in terms of their taste and you know the process of working with them you know i think they've become i'm starting to realize that they're becoming more you know this is what we want this is how we want it you know it seems like they're becoming more focused it used to be it it seemed like you know we would go into a project and they would go we just want to remodel our bathroom you know our small bathroom we just want to start there what do you suggest? How would you do it? And now it's becoming more focused. A lot of design, we get a lot of designers with our projects as well. Like this one had a great designer, Brass Tax, out of Kansas City, Missouri. I love the design. It's going to turn out awesome in the end. And I think that's the last few, I would say the last probably. People know exactly what they want and down to the minute detail, right? Like they're picking oh, up. Every- Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, they have pictures and ideas and they have it all lined out, which is great for us. I mean, yeah, yeah, we love that. Are you managing your projects and your lead flow? Like, cause I'm assuming, cause you know, the other parts of the woodpreneur community, you know, it's not as complex, right? Like you're either building one thing, one table, one kitchen, but there's so many different pieces of what you got going on. Like, how are you managing information flow? So we use co-construct, which is a builder software uh, or construction software, I should say. Um, and we use that to kind of keep track of everything and it it does a great job for us. I probably don't utilize it to the fullest as I probably could just because, you know, it's me and another guy, Um, but we do have subs that we can put in on that and they can kind of see the flow of. Got you. uh, Got you. Yeah. Yeah. And you uh, can put a punch list and they can take care of it and stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. So it's very cool. Very cool. What's been the biggest highlight of running this business so far? Like, what do you love to get out of it? You know, honestly, I never would have thought that I would have made, you know, lifelong friends out of it, but I've made several lifelong friends that, you know, we'll do a big project for them. And just because we're there for six months, you know, maybe three to six months, depending on the size of the project, you end up becoming friends with a lot of people and, you know, having dinner with them and, you know, family and kids, and it becomes one of those things. And so that's probably the biggest, I never would have thought that would have happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's really fascinating. How many projects could you handle at once? Typically we'll have one big project like we're doing right now. It's a larger project. We'll be here probably right at two months, but when we're waiting for subs and stuff like that to get their stuff done, we'll go and do a small project that may take one or two days. You know, we'll do okay. 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 like last week, we did a three day shower install where we took out the old tub and put it in a new shower, walk in a shower that was ADA compliant. So cool. That, yeah. 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 We did construction on our home and it was a pretty big remodel and it took a year, right? It took yeah. a long time. I was like, how many projects do you got going on at once? He was like, I don't know. I got like six or seven, right? That's why I'm fascinated with construction folks. Cause it's like your brain and your capacity to handle information, clients, materials, teams, it's like probably operates at a high capacity. Do you sleep well? <laughs> no, I don't sleep at all. Hardly. I wake up in the middle of the night. Thinking about like, stuff. Oh, I forgot to email this person or I forgot to do that or, you know, and the and I'll jot it down and go back to sleep. And yeah, you know. yeah, 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 no, well, I, I get that. Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? You know, I think we're going to be at the same pace that we are 
but I, I really like to see us, you know, grow and maybe take on those, you know, multiple jobs, you know, that would be a good growth for me. We've tried that in the past and I kind of fell on my face because I didn't have my systems in place. Yeah. You know, I didn't have maybe the right people at the time Mm -hmm. to manage those systems or those projects. So it kind of fell down and I had to take a step back and kind of restart things. For sure. So for sure. Uh, How do you spend most of your time? Are you still actively building as well? It's usually pretty much it's seven days a week for me. Yeah. I mean, it it just seems I can't sit still. I don't, I don't sit still well. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, I actively build. I like to be in on the projects. I like to, you know, it keeps me moving and motivated just to see things, how they go. But I'm getting to that point where I need to probably step back just a touch and start focusing more on, you know, like paperwork, keeping contact with customers and making sure that things are getting done, you know, as we speed towards those customers that we're getting ready to, For sure. you know, to work on their projects. Work on their projects. Yeah. 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 What's one thing that you wish you knew when you first started that you know now? Oh man, that's a tough one. <laughs> you know, I would probably say the business side of it, that aspect of it. I think I wish I would have known more about how to run a business, how a business is supposed to work and, you know, how you're supposed to do it and not just, you know, shooting at the hip and just trying to learn on the fly. Yeah. But yeah. That has its goods and its bads. So. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the part of the podcast where I give you any marketing or business advice. So is there a thing that you'd like some help on a question that you have or marketing or business related that will kind of help you sort of, you know, maybe what's the thing that's keeping you up at night that I could help you out with? I think it would be the social aspect, how to grow my social. Yeah. How to grow that. How do you make that all work and everything? Because I've been doing, you know, I've been on Instagram and all that stuff. I try to post daily or every other day. It seems like when we have good content, that aspect of it. For sure. That's a really good question. A lot of people like to look at social media as a way to sort of measure, you know, like get more followers. Cause ultimately what you want is more customers, right? Like you want to be able to get more qualified leads from this particular channel so that you can sort of get out of the word of mouth trap, right? So like it's going well, you're constantly getting new jobs and it's all word of mouth you do such a great job. So it's like, in my, my head, the question is like, how do I translate that amazing word of mouth to grow a better social following? Right. Yeah. And so I'm looking at your Instagram and one of the things that I see or I don't see is more client testimonials, right? So there's a couple of things. One is using your highlights. You can use your highlights as a portfolio, right? Then okay on Instagram. And so one of them is like, you could have remodels, additions, bathrooms, kitchens, and you have all those pictures, you know, where they are all on your phone, right? They're, oh yeah. (laughs) Everything is on your phone. Right. And so what you can do is utilize the Instagram highlights. Um, I think I'm doing a first here, so I'm going to do a screen share. So you see highlights, you can use those. And you can have one that says about me, reviews, kitchens, bathrooms, remodels, home addition. Like literally that's your portfolio right then and there. The other thing is, do you have a podcast too? I do. I haven't done it in probably six or eight months. Okay. My wife wife and I were talking about that last night. So funny enough, you should totally interview your customers. Only interview your customers. Only your customers go back to your old customers as a way to like remind them that you exist because they're literally living in your work. They're literally living in your work. Go back to your customers and be like, Hey, can I interview you for 20 minutes about your kitchen or your bathroom that I remodeled? And what was it like working with me when I get you on the podcast? Right? Like you can do stuff like that. And then obviously you can show before and afters, right? And then 
reels. That's one thing, right? That's mm-hmm. one thing. It's like utilize your si- story highlights. And I would also argue to say that what you want to do is get better qualifying uh-huh. leads, sources. So go back to your customers and friend them on Facebook. Okay. And engage in all their stuff, right? Uh, If you're still friends with your customers, like you said, you go to dinner and the kids and all of that sort of stuff, like literally take selfies with them. And it's like, this is my customer. Now we're friends. Like you can be that guy. Like you can be friends with, because you're in somebody's home. It's very close and very intimate, right? It's their home. And so if you can convey your brand, and so this is what I would do if we were working together is like, I would help translate who your brand is to help give you more purpose. And so just, you know, by talking to you a little bit, it would be like, hey, you know, I'm the guy that is everybody's friend after I've redone their work. And I'm pretty sure intuitively, you probably only take on jobs with people that you like. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I have. Sometimes you take up as you need to, right? (laughs) Yeah, that is a true statement. We do take on jobs that we need to. But typically, I usually go through a process when I talk to somebody, you know, how do I feel? You know, how does this feel like a good fit? You can kind of sense, oh, this is going to be a trouble client, right? Yeah, exactly. There's just something about it. I don't think we're going to fit together, you know, and I've had those conversations with people. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. That's a hard conversation because you don't want to tell people, you know, hey, you suck and I don't want to work for you. (laughs) Yeah, you stink. (laughs) But, But here's the thing. I think that's your message. Like if you can convey, like you're in somebody's bathroom, they're friends, right? Like you know them. Like, I mean, because that will go so much more further than any kind of growth thing or hack or an advertisement, right? The mere fact that, you know, Nathan Zirkel from A to Z Man Construction is literally the nicest, friendliest contractor that gets back to you. He doesn't sleep at night because he's thinking about your project, right? Like. People want that in a world where contractors get a bad rap. They don't return calls. They're late. They do all of this sort of stuff. And I bet you, you probably, given the fact that you are a firefighter, that you have this service mindset in your head. Like you want to be the best. You want to do the best for people and do right by them. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, nothing's half-assed. It's all done, you know, how it's supposed to be. For sure. For sure. And if, That's your and if they don't like it, oh yeah. And I'm putting my name on it. If they don't like it, then yeah. they're going to tell everybody else they don't like this. Exactly. Because nobody remembers the good stuff. They always remember the bad stuff. Abs- so. Absolutely. So anyway, was that helpful? Oh yeah, that was very helpful. I mean, you got the wheels turning in my head as we were talking. And now I've got like a thousand ideas that I want to throw throw to my wife. So, For sure. Yeah. And that, that would be the thing is like leverage your platform. Don't care about followers at all. Care about authentic content, like good, heartwarming content. Like if your Instagram and your Facebook are your storefronts because you don't have a storefront, like how can you portray your true authentic self to the person that is your potential customer? Is that cool? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's perfect. That's great advice. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So any last bit of parting advice for the woodpreneur community, especially the contractors out there? You know, one thing I would say was we all have good days. We all have bad days. You know, it's all up and down. It's a roller coaster of life being a contractor. You know, one thing I read this morning from a guy was wake up every morning and say, this is going to be a great day. And then go to bed every night and say this, that was the best day. And I thought, well, that's, that's some good advice. I mean, that would get you off on the right foot. So yeah, you prime your day to the day that you want to happen, right? Instead of the day that's presented in front of you. you like you Exactly. Can, yeah, that's awesome, man. Hey, so what's your website? What's your Instagram? It's just A to Z Man Construction. Is okay. it? Cool. So, and it's the same thing on Facebook and 
It's a to Z man construction.com is our website. So awesome. Well, cool. Nathan, thank you so much for taking the time out of your literal build to do this and to share your story. I really, really appreciate your story and your journey so far. Thanks for sharing it. No problem. Thanks for having me on. All right. Take care. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Woodpreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for the business and marketing side of the lumber, woodworking, hardwood, flooring, and sawmill industry. If you like what you heard, please give us a five-star rating and review. You can also tap into our community by visiting woodpreneurlife.com. Once again, that's woodpreneurlife.com. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next episode.